Hello, we're the huge movie fanatics coming back, continuing the Friday the 13th franchise. This time, I'm here to tell you, Jason lives. Friday the 13th, part six. Basically, the beginning of this movie ends as you mentioned, or begins as you mentioned with the, how how, the, how they imagined he would, uh, how Tommy, how dreamed. the audience expected him to be awake and in the fifth one. Well, they're like, well, that didn't pan out. Let's just have it happen. What's interesting <laughs> is it just occurred to me right now. Tommy Jarvis had that dream in the beginning of Part Five. Well, he just he had that dream. That's where the idea to do it came from. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you get it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you know he brings this friend from, and it, it, you get a little hint because there's an old truck in New Beginning, and they're driving an old truck at the beginning of Part Six. So I get the feeling that actually he's still in the mental house. Is what I get the, the feeling. And he's took the truck for them. That, that's my impression, I get. And this, I, I this, figured that he just ignored the fifth one. Oh, no. Well, that, that, that's what I think. Is because the guy goes, the guy in the front in the truck when they're driving at the beginning, he's like, if the institution ever found out about this, they'd haul her butts back in a straight jacket. Permanent. So I thought they were still, I thought it was just a friend from the nuthouse. But anyway, they go and they, I think it's so funny. It's such a ridiculous excuse. This is the first Friday the 13th where it's kind of like they're really, well, maybe not the first, but one of them, they're really trying to do it knowing almost like scream in a way where they know it is it is a little bit self self referential where it's like they know these movies are ridiculous and they're gonna acknowledge it to a certain extent. So he goes to the <clears throat> grave to what? Just make sure he's dead. Is there something like that? Yeah. By doing and by, by making sure he's he's dead, he brings him back to life, which is I think very ironic and funny. This is the very first of the <clears throat> part five, I, I said that the first four for me are in a grouping. Five is by itself, and this is the beginning of the post post the zombie post, Jason. The zombie Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the beginning of the walking Jason. And he walked actually very if you see some of the shots of his legs, he actually walks really fast. But he's still <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but he's still walking. And um, you know, I, part of me likes the, the rotted Jason. Um, that's fine. I mean, I think the, I think what the director did, I think the guy who made it and wrote it was, was really talented. I really love what he did with it. And I think it's, I don't think the movie did as well as they, because they put a lot of, it looks like it's really, I don't know, there's something about it that just got this polish. I mean, it's, it is a studio polish. And, and the thing is about some of the nighttime scenes, they're, they're just so like with the smoke and, and the stuff drifting in the scenes. It's so almost like, I mean, Again, it's it's overly cinematic, it's overly whatever, but that's the director's particular way he's cut where he's coming from. Take it off. How many stars are you gonna give that one? Probably three. I'll probably give uh, six three. I think it's I mean it's it's really competent and it's really kind of a fun in a way it's like the first popcorn Friday thirteen movie where it's it's more, they're, they're really, I think they're really going for more of a mainstream kind of, and they really started to make Jason like, like whatever, the superhero or whatever the hell you want to call it, anti-hero, whatever it's called. Yeah. It, he, this was the star vehicle for Jason, so much so that it was even called Jason Lives, and also to let the audience know that this is Jason, he's back. It's not right, yeah, some it's, dude it's not uh, um, Roy Lives. Yeah. Roy was the name of the, <laughs> yeah. <one>. So, um, <laughs> the movie... This is the first one uh, that really worked for me, and I think it's, in a lot of respects, probably the best one to that point, um, that uh, Jason kind of worked. Uh, and it was because they had fun with it. Like the third one, this is why I gave it, uh, that did that notch to two and a half. That movie seemed a little more fun, a little more, as you say, popcorn. This one is far more than that. Yeah, this one yeah. is so much popcorn, so more, uh, much more fun. But then the movie kind of devolves in the last like half hour to being just sort of generic kind of horror movie. Uh, but I like the scenes where like he's walking in the eyeball and he slashes doing the James Bond. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like uh, the two people in the uh, truck um, who are like, well, we don't go that way because there's a killer over there, and like they uh, they want to leave, and then the, the Mastercard floating in the uh, in the puddle and things like that. It had fun. It had a sense of humor. The guy Express. hitting his American head on the uh, tree. I thought it was American Express. Uh, yeah. <laughs> guy hitting his head on the tree, uh, and then the little smiley face. Oh, that, gosh, like, wasn't that great? All that kind of stuff. I was all for that. The fact that it had fun, and it's like, we know you know what the formula is. You yeah. want to see Jason kill people. Well, we'll he'll kill, kill people this time in new, fun, and innovative ways. We know Triple that. Come on, let's do it. Like, this is the first time they didn't lie to me, kind of thing. Yeah, like, right. 
I knew what it was going in, and they gave it to me with a sense of fun and flair, and that's what I liked. So that's that's why I'm going to give the movie two and a half as well. Um, no, I gave it. What I give it three. You gave it three. Well, I mean, like I I give two and a half, much like I gave the <laughs> third one two. And oh, half. okay, right. Um, so yeah, two and a half. Uh, it's fun. The last half sort of devolves into just generic kind of. Well, what should be movie. mentioned? That this but I do like the uh, characters. The characters, oh, and there's okay. some performances by some of the actors in the movie that are really quite good. There's a guy who's sitting there, sort of like explaining to like the kids at the camp council. Yeah, you mentioned and that before. Isn't yeah, that he's funny? he's phenomenal. That dude is great. In, in that part of the whole. This whole in the whole the uh, in the whole movie, but that part especially. Isn't like, it great? It's like, so you so you got this kid as just knocks him over because he, she doesn't want anyone to see here anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, he's just good. He's so naturalistic, and that's what the movie didn't have. Everybody, even in the third one, which I uh, cited as people sort of stepped up their performances, they're still kind of performances. This one just seemed felt naturalistic from a few of the uh, cast members and whatnot. Uh, still don't dig on the whole Tommy Jarvis thing. I do like how they brought him down in the end. That was kind of cool. Brought um, him down. Jason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, and, he, the only way to kill him was to is to kill him where he didn't die before. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, then this starts the Jason fearing water kind of thing that they play on in Freddy vs. Jason. Um, so, yeah, I mean, two and a half, it's good. Yeah, I give it three. Oh, what I was going to say before is it should be mentioned that this is the only one where there's actually campers at. Camp yeah, Crystal Lake. it's not and Crystal Lake. It's Camp Forest Green, isn't Forest it? Green, yeah. <laughs> they changed the name. They didn't want to be associated. Which is kind of cool the, that they were like, kind of cool. Si uh, they were like, well, we can just if we change the name. Like you knew that there was a marketing behind the like the Chris the people at Crystal Lake. We need to wash that away. And, and like isn't I kind of cool? like that. That's, that's where sort I think of the, the writer. I think the writer behind it. I really like the guy and the guy who wrote it, directed it. I think that that was. A, Hell of a talent, that guy. And yeah. I have a feeling it might have been even better if they just let him do everything. Like I still get the sense of studio interference. Like they probably saw it and they're like, "This is too jokey." Where's oh, the Jason yeah, killing? Yeah. And that's why the last half of the movie sort of devolves into Jason just sort of creepily looking around. There's a scene that he wrote for the end. I can't remember if he didn't put it in for himself or the studio. Where uh, that 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 grave guy, the caretaker, yeah. the grave. Or something like that. I can't remember how it went. The end, some hooded figure came up or something like that, and it was like Jason's dad that was mm -hmm. paying him to keep Jason's grave up. Well, that would have been kind of Which neat. was a kind of a cool ending. Yeah. So I don't know why that's, if it's studio or why that wasn't in there, but it's an ending that you. Yeah, but you're right. He does know. have talent. Like, yeah. And oh, this yeah. really showed it. I think this is probably the, one of the. This is the second best for, for me of all the Friday the 13th. The first being movies. what? Uh, first best? The, no, the uh, it's coming up. So oh, forthcoming. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, and it's the best so far. Oh, okay. So it's your favorite so far. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. Yeah. Just to keep just to keep time from going on too long, maybe we'll just leave it at that. I, I uh, this is one of the first ones that I saw when I was when I was a kid when I was twelve, and uh, I taped it off TV and I watched it over and over and over and over in '89. So the rewatchability on this one is great. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's just like it's so much fun. Uh, basically, the ones that I've given the two and a half star reviews, the one, three, and, and six have the most rewatchability. I think out of out of all of them in general, those three are the ones that I find the most rewatchable. This one being the most rewatchable. Uh, uh, well, yeah, because it is very much. Yeah, w uh, one and this one are the most rewatchable. I think, uh, okay. even though I like the third one better than the first one. First one. So, very good. Sounds great. Thanks for watching. Strange idea entertainment.